Hey guys, welcome back to AIDS at Education. Today we're going to discuss our 15 words stick till the end because every word here is so important for day-to-day -day conversations and your CELP and IELTS exams and, or any English exam you're doing. These words are so important for you to know. Now the first word, you're going to be so familiar with it, you've heard it before, it is visceral. Visceral is used to define feelings but really, really intense feelings or emotions. For example, Something like digestion. That is something you feel when you hear voices from your tummy or when you're bloated. You feel digestion. But we won't use it for that. We're going to use it for something intense. For example, you are going to a company and you don't feel good about these people. You know, you feel that they're a little negative. That's okay. You feel that way. But when you say you have a visceral feeling that this company is so negative, it means you feel it all the way in your body. It's your gut feeling that's coming out. It's telling you something is wrong. Let me give you an even better example. Let's talk about burglaries. When that happens or when there's such a scary situation when you're being robbed, you feel like you're shaking, your whole body is shaking. You feel chills going down your spine and your tummy everywhere, right? That feeling of fear is a visceral feeling because it comes from within. You really feel it intensely. So you can use it for really extreme intense feelings. The next word is lateral. Lateral is kind of hard to define. I'm going to define it now. Uh, hopefully it makes sense. Lateral is pointing towards something, at something, towards some direction, or maybe the side of something. So if it confuses you, it means you understood it actually, because it means, for example, if I talk about the lateral side of my laptop, I could mean maybe pointing on that lateral side. So that's one thing I'm pointing at it. Or I could talk about the side, the literal side, the lateral right side. I don't even need to say lateral. I can just say right side, but it is a word that people say. So better to know it. It defines a side or if you're pointing at some place that is the lateral side of that object. For plants, for example, you can say the plants drink water through their lateral roots. It simply means from that direction or from the side of the roots. Word number three is presumptuous. Presumptuous people are not good people because when you're presumptuous or, or you know, maybe they're good people, but not saying the right thing is because when you're presumptuous, you make assumptions which you're presuming uh, by error and you're not usually doing it correctly. So let me define it further. If you're in a party and you just met someone and they're really nice people, everybody in the community knows that this person is a really nice guy, but you have a wrong impression. You're saying that this person is this way because they, their mom or dad harassed them or beat them up. And that's why this, this guy is messed up. Now you're being presumptuous because everybody in the party is thinking you said something really inappropriate. You're presuming something, you're making assumptions by thinking that you have the right opinion, but you're in a very wrong place. So something inappropriate like that would make you a presumptuous person, which is never a good thing to call someone or uh, be called a presumptuous. Word number four is oversight. Oversight has two meanings, very different meanings, very opposite meanings. So if you have oversight, some project had an oversight, it means some important detail was skipped. So the manager had an oversight in this project. That's why the project failed. It means maybe he didn't detect an error in the project. The, the other meaning of oversight is so opposite. It means to supervise something or oversee something. So if I want to oversee your progress or uh, I want to have an oversight on everything you're doing, it means I want to supervise that. Completely different. I don't know why they didn't come up with another word, but those are the two meanings of oversight. Word number five is pretentious. Pretentious is someone who is faking something, showing off, for example, those YouTubers who you see with all the Lamborghinis. They sometimes they have Lamborghinis genuinely. Sometimes they're renting it just to show it off in that video. So if they're renting it, those people are being pretentious, faking it or showing it off. The next word is win-win. Not a very complex word, but what is win-win? Except for if you put win aside, what is win-win? It is a dictionary accepted term, so you can use it. Win-win is when two or more parties win at a certain decision. So if I'm negotiating a contract with, let's say, an immigration consultancy, and I tell them, hey, you send me your clients, I'm going to teach them English, IELTS or CELPIP or English classes. So I win because I get that customer and the immigration consultancy wins because their customer gets another service and they have more customer satisfaction. So it is a win-win situation in those cases. Word number six is push the envelope. So uh, envelope in this case, it's not a literal envelope. It's more like 
pushing the boundaries, pushing the limit. So it is a phrasal verb that I want to teach you here. Pushing the envelope is more like pushing the boundaries, going beyond what is needed or expected or required and trying your level best, which no one else can compete with. That is pushing the envelope in any field you're in. Word number seven or phrase number seven is bending backwards. So it's not literally bending backwards, but if you are trying some on something with intensity and you are really focused on it, you are bending backwards to achieve that purpose. So I am bending backwards these days to push my YouTube channel, for example. That simply means I'm trying extremely, extremely hard. That is what that means. The next word is rustic. Rustic is something plain, simple. No, it doesn't have to do anything with rust. It simply means it is very old, very plain, very simple style, not fashionable, not modern. It is just totally simple. So a good adjective for you to know and learn and use. The ninth word is proactive. So proactive is a very common word in suggestions. When you hear people telling you be proactive instead of being reactive, that simply means make your own reactions don't let the public decide how you have to react to certain situations. So for example, let's say you get fired from your job. What is going to be your reaction? You're probably going to be depressed or you're probably going to look for other jobs. That is what the society expects you to do. But if you're proactive, maybe you could one, start your own business, something that you feel is an opportunity instead of something at this moment, which is a moment of despair. Instead of this, you can turn it into an opportunity, make your own reaction, or you can go back to your old boss and convince them that you didn't do anything wrong and hire me back. That is what people don't usually do. But if you're making your own reactions, your own outcomes, you are being proactive. The next word is reimagine simply means to imagine something again, but mostly in a better way. So if you have, if I ask you, what is your plan in life? And you tell me this, 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 and I tell you, why don't you reimagine yourself and now consider yourself becoming a billionaire? Now, what is your plan? So I'm asking you to give me a better plan instead of an average plan in that case. And that word suited there is reimagine. The next word is higher order thinking. Simple, It you can probably tell what it means. It simply means thinking, which is of a higher order, but specifically it means thinking, which is not based on memorization. So if I'm a tutor, I got to tell my students, hey, memorize these few things, these templates, these words. But I also have to tell them, you need to have the higher order thinking because you also have to understand what the examiner is thinking, what what your um, test, uh, whoever's going to mark your test, whatever they're thinking. Think of that. If you can put yourself in their shoes, you can think of what you have to do. So that kind of thinking, which, which involves analysis or interpretation, that is called higher order thinking. The next word is ballpark. Ballpark figure means an a roundabout figure, not an exact figure. So if I ask you to give me a discount, you're a car salesman. What is the discount you can give me? Yeah, well, you cannot tell me because obviously your boss tells you not to. All right, what is the ballpark figure? Okay, so that means don't give me an exact figure, just a round estimate, just, just a good estimate. The next word is core competency. Core competency is for businesses, but it also could be used for individuals. So if you are in a school and you have a group, what is your core competency? What is your group doing better than other groups in the school? Is it more uh, efficient time management? Is it all of you have creative abilities? You must have one or two advantages that will make that advantage or advantages your core competency. The next second last word is entitlement. Entitlement is your privilege to have something. So my entitlement in this uh, country in Canada is to have food, water, shelter, though those are some things that but people could should be able to work for it. There should be work for it. Or if there's no work, the government should provide that. So those things which we deserve are our entitlements. Good word for you to know, good word for you to use in your writing and speaking. And another really awesome word at the end for the 15th word is holistic. Holistic approach, you would hear this many times. Holistic approach means a complete approach, an entire approach, a total approach, not missing anything. It includes everything in its entirety. And when I talk about anything else except for approach, it still means the same thing, a complete whole thing. For example, I want to give you the definition of holistic in a holistic way, which means in a complete way without skipping any detail. And that's what that means. And those are the 15 words you need to know to improve your writing and speaking, to speak like a native speaker, and to really have a versatile vocabulary. Please subscribe to my channel and you'll get these vocabulary lessons weekly, mostly every Monday. Thank you guys. Take care.